Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Rough Mix Podcast. Today's episode is episode 19, and we're going to be discussing on how to master your songs in order to get them radio ready and any tips that we have to improve your masters. And um, <clears throat> we're all going to be showing you our tips and, well, not showing you, but discussing and providing tips that we have learned and learned over the past y- year now that we've done the, the podcast. So we've grown a lot, a lot more experience, a lot more knowledge on, you know, hands-on physically in the Pro Tools and in studios. But now we have a lot more experience to give you guys that are listening out there. So whether you're watching this on YouTube, don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe if you're watching this on Google uh, or any of the st- any rate us five stars on all platforms, follow us on Spotify and all that, you know, and um, share it to your friends because I guarantee you they'll, everybody can learn something new out of this podcast. But first thing I want to say um, to give out, um, <clears throat> to give a quick shout out to my dog, Julio. Uh, he actually remember. I don't think anybody ever know, knew this, but before we started in the podcast, I said, you know, we'd, we'd, we had shout out five people that DM'd us and, uh, we actually got two to shout out today. We got Julio. Um, and then we got, uh, I don't want to mispronounce his name, but he's from Germany. His name is S U A T, right? SWAT. My dog, he's 16. Dog. Shout he's out my dog. 16. He's 16 and he's a beast. He is a beast. Shout out him. Shout out Julio. There you go. That's two. We, I said five, but we only got two. So if we got three more open spots, hit us up and we'll shout you on the next podcast. And once we get five consistently, you know, it's going to be a bigger thing. We'll put a little fucking song in the background, all that stuff. We're going to gift the fifth person a U87 and... Uh, We're going to gift him a U87 to gift ourselves. <laughs> and mail back to him. <laughs> You're going to give a free SSL 9K. I'll ship it myself. They can have mine. That's good. No, but uh, we want to get into some uh, tips on how to improve a, improve your masters. I know um, some people are asking for a, a mastering video, and I think this is a perfect video, um, a perfect opportunity for us to now explain because we've all had so much experience now in, in mastering and not, not only just mastering, but mixing. You know, and one, one thing also I want to say before you master is like, don't try to give a mix to an engineer and be like, hey, can you turn my vocals up or down? You know, that's mixing. That's not mastering. Mastering engineers. And not, just also say, I don't want to, th- I want people to think that we're mastering engineers only and that we're professionals. You know, we're only doing this from our experience of knowing. So we mix and master our own songs just because, you know, we're not trying to sound, we're not trying to send that out to a mastering engineer. Just, you know what I'm saying? Like we try to do it, you know, it's, this is what we are. We're both mixed. So we're trying to do it all ourselves, you know, in house. So um, for, don't, don't try to assume that a mastering engineer can, turn down your vocals or the snare of the beat you know like it's not that's all in mixing you know like we i mean vic went to a music expo and they told us there that a lot of like he's a master there's a master engineer there he's really um he thinks something romanowski that's his, his name is Roman- romanowski or something like that michael romanowski michael romanowski is the last his uh name he's and he's famous i guess really he's famous about him all the time he's yeah him. and he's he's had a lot of sessions where people tell him hey um can you turn down my vocals or, you know, on the beat or like something like that or on the song? And yeah. then like, that's not my job. Like my job is a mastering engineer. I'm not a mixing engineer. That's part of the mixing process. So first thing I can give you is to get a proper master, have a nice clean and, and perfect mix to your ear. That's the best tip I can give right now. But all I'll right. go ahead and let Vic talk right now. Go ahead. So like, all right. So for that music expo, um, like uh, it's just like a ton of people who like are into like music and stuff, or, like engineering and stuff. And so the guy was like, Robert was like, or Michael, I don't know how I say Robert. Michael was like, um, was like, yo, uh, do you guys know what mastering is? Like, you know, all these people raised their hand. They thought they knew everything, you know, and they, they, they all answered. Everybody answered this question wrong. Like everybody answered it wrong. And like they answered it how me and Esteban thought or how I, I'll speak for myself, how I thought mastering was way back way back when I first started. But like, I already knew what mastering was because like we talked about it a little bit and like, I know kind of what it is. I'm not the best at it, but I know kind of what it is. And like, just to give a quick rundown, I also, I may be wrong. I'm pretty sure I'm not wrong though. But anyways, so mastering is like when you prepare a final bounce track to be the proper, the proper, um, bit death and sample conversion and, and, and LUFS and RMS meters and all those to whatever you're listening on 
Um, so like nowadays, like if you're a mastering, uh, mastering engineer, um, sometimes we'll send like a separate bounce for Spotify because Spotify will play their stuff at 44 one and they will, uh, play it at like a uh, negative 13 or 14 LUFS. And then like Apple can play theirs at 48 to 96 K. So like a, a mastering engineer will bounce theirs out for like an Apple bounce, a Spotify bounce. And they pretty much get the sound, the song to sound the best and the loudest out the speakers before the speakers will it's just the mastering is. So the final, final process of the song, which is like small touches on frequencies, like maximum, like negative two or three dB. They'll go like on a frequency, they'll go like minus five. Like it's people who like super refined ears and then they will set the, the, overall volume to be like radio ready so that way it sounds loud it matches all the other loudness of like all the other songs and there's a lot more they do but like it's much more technical and i can't even get into that because like i don't know all the technical things but that's a very rough explanation also that was very good uh explanation i thought that was very good i understood what you were saying but um I think we can give the, a few tips that I can give right off the bat is like from what has to go with like two episodes ago, I believe Vic was saying that there's a free uh, metering plugin he was talking about. Um, I think that's a really good tool to use, especially at the end of your chain. Um, you know, just to literally just for metering to see like what he was saying about the LUFs and, you know, your peaks and, and also um, that's not going to help you with your like sample rates because that's when you're bouncing, but it'll help you with the metering of how loud how loud a song usually is. I think Apple is a negative fourteen. Oh, I mean uh, Spotify. Sorry, I think it's negative fourteen. I believe Spotify is maybe a little bit louder, isn't it? Negative thirteen, is it? I think so. I'm not really too sure because every time I look it up too and I ask the teachers, some places will say fourteen, some places will say thirteen. So I don't really know, but I know it's around that thirteen. Yeah. Well, what was that free plugin um, you're talking about? Yeah, it's called the Ulean Loudness Meter, and it's free. There it is. Look that one up. Download that. Try it out. Um, it's free, so it's not going to like, you know, it's what are you going to complain about? It's a free plugin that you didn't have before that you, now you have. It's a new tool. Um, so I think uh, that's a good, that's a good rate right, right off the bat. A straight good tip I can give you is a free plugin to lim- for limiting like that's or for um, metering. So um, another thing I can give. Oh, go ahead, Vic. I was going to say what would be good for us to do is maybe like we all go around and say our three essential things that we think mastering is and then the three plugins are like what we put on our stereo bus to okay. do because we all I'm sure we all have different things i think our all our buses or our tracks are probably different like the plugins we use but um i think the end goal that our end result is probably the same you know is to make sure it's a clean quality you know high quality uh okay eli's over here thinking he's a beast I, i'm gonna let, i can't wait till eli gives out the sauce today Oh, he is a mastering engineer. Yeah, yeah, Eli is really a mastering engineer, though. He just sits at home, you know, drinks like four beers, and then starts mixing your, and starts mastering songs all night. And then, you know, that's it's, that's a life. That's a life we can't live. You know, it's life for a man. That's that's for a real man right there. Um, but I th- I think we can definitely talk about um what plugins we use for sure, and like what our end goal of you know our set and set like mastering, um chain goes and stuff like that so i think for me the uh, first thing i always put in is a um my mastering chain is probably never i mean it has changed it does change here and there of like the order i put in stuff and then the the plugins i use so um recently i haven't really been ma- the last song i really mastered was maybe like three weeks ago like i haven't really done anything like currently in the last two to three weeks um and what i use for that a particular one that I use quite a bit, and um, so the first thing I'll put on is a is a pool tech. I'll either use the Puig tech if you have Waves one. You know, if you don't want to go ahead and if you don't have a, a universal audio like um, the universal audio uh, pool tech, I would I would suggest using the Puig tech. It's like thirty bucks. You can buy it. I'm not sure if you could buy it by itself, or it might be a, the the Puig Joseph John Joseph Puig um, bundle. I'm not sure. You have to look that one up. I can't I can't really give that one out. I'm not sure. I don't remember, but I just know. The Puig Tech um, is what I use for my, the first thing I put on there is the Puig Tech. And then um, after the Puig Tech, the, what, I, what I'll do with the Puig Tech is um, I'll bring it to like, usually I always put 60. You could do the frequency, I believe it's 30, 60, and 100. And 
and then you, I, I widen up my bandwidth. So I make the, I open up the, my, I make my queue broad, right? I open it up a lot, like not that much though. I'll, I'll, I'll always by ear. It's always ear. It's never the same every single song. You know, it's always I always just start off at zero and then just bring it up and then I always boost. I'll boost around three to four, and then I'll like attenuate around like two to three maybe. I, I like kind of like half it kind of and then bring it up a bit. You'll you, you'll know every song is always going to be different, but there's a little bit of things that are somewhat the same. Um, and then I'll go ahead and boost around 5K just because um, I actually did that because of Vic. At first, I used to boost 8 to 12, one of those two. and then But now I just did 5K because I, I feel like it kind of brings out the presence of the voice a little bit. So if you're having trouble of getting like the getting the vocals to, I don't want to say to bring up the vocals, but to make it kind of cohesive, but at the same time, make it, stand out a bit more i guess i don't know how to explain it but also like we were saying is like you know i'm not i'm not my goal is not to try to make the vocal louder because that's in the mix that's not I, something i could do if i'm just getting the the session you know to master so that's not something i can do but what i'll do is boost for on 5k um and also you don't have to have the pre tech you know you could just do this with a simple eq but there is a, a science behind the pool tech and how it works so um if you want to look that up you just google like how does a pool tech work and then you'll learn you'll learn what it it's like mostly about trans transducers and the tubes and stuff that's in there. And it has like, just look it up. You'll learn more than I could probably explain to you. Um, that's what I'll, that's what I'll go ahead and do for my, for my pull check. And then um, I'll put in the next thing I'll always do is I try to do like a stereo, a stereo um, enhancement plugin. So I'll put in either center, bring the low ends middle, or I'll use either center air stereo with uh, air stereo wide, widener. Or um, that's it. Actually, that's it. I just use. I usually mostly rely on center. I've been playing with that one. Jimmy and Miles put me on that. If you remember them from the beginning of the of the episodes, Jimmy and Miles put me on those. And then I go ahead and use an NLS bus just to add some saturation. If not the NLS bus, bus I'll put on Little Radiator. I like that one a lot. That's from Sound Toys. Um, a free one is um, a free uh, saturator. Um, oh wow, it's not free. I was thinking about the Aphex, but that's Waves. I forgot that's Waves. I don't know why I thought it was like stock in Pro Tools. But Aphex Vintage is a good one to also use. Um, NLS is probably the, my favorite, though, just because you could emulate an, S an SSL uh, board, like an SSL. The way it runs through the SSL, it brings like that kind of tonality, and then it brings the EMI, and then um, EMI, SSL, and why can't I think of the other one? Um, EMI, SSL. Neve. The Neve. There you go. I could not think of literally the the one I use the most. Um, what I've so what I've suggested or what I've found out is the EMI is kind of a little bit like low end, like a low end supportive. I feel like but that's just my opinion. The way I think it sounds to me. I agree. Uh, actually, one hundred percent. Yeah, I I think the EMI is kind of for the. Low, I like that. I don't know. But EMI is what I what I pick usually, and um, Neve's a little bit more gritty, I think. So that's just me. And then SSL is kind of a more flat tone, but it, it adds like a little, it makes it like literally with every teacher I've ever heard, it makes it like has that warm, you know, sound. So uh, it's SSL cool. on the NL, on the NLS bus is the, um, uh, the spike, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's the one I use. I like that one just for like clean, like, like if you don't want too much, if you don't want too much, I guess, saturation or gritty. I think that one is the cleanest. I think it's the cleanest one. Like, but, uh, Shout out George, our teacher, signal processing. Um, he told us that like a lot of rap engineers, like Dr. Dre, for example, hella like OG rap engineers, like classic ones, they like the SSL the most because the SSL is like the one console that gives it the less amount of like, uh, it does the less amount of things to the actual like song. It still adds color, but it does less than like the EMI or the Neve. So you're gonna get like the less amount of change but with still some change if that makes sense. I think the best plugin that I could, that's all, I'm not going to lie, NLS is probably the best plugin I could give out, I could tell people to recommend to buy. It, not even just for mastering. This is for every, you could put it on every single, every single track you have and just give it a bit of that characteristic and you'll mix, you'll, your mix will just improve like literally like two to four times more. Like it, it just adds like this characteristic and you just can't get it from, a lot of other plugins, especially a plugin that emulates three different consoles on one. Like I've never heard of that before, you know, like, and that's what separates them. I know studio one has like their own thing. It's like pre pre-built into it. Um, so if you're using studio one, I know there's a free one on there. 
Um, cause my, our teachers, our teacher George has actually told us about that. Um, but that's, that's, that's what I usually give. I'll give out to people or what I'll tell you guys. Um, so the pool tech and, and the NLS bus and a metering plugin and like, don't be afraid to use two or three limiters. And that's all I'm gonna say. And go ahead, Vic. I'll let Vic, I'll let Vic go ahead. All right, cool. Um, so like, like always my mastering chain or my stereo bus chain is like always changing. Um, so like, I'll just say what like I've recently been using. So recently what I've been doing or like the things that I say that I would look out, look out for when I'm mastering is like, so like the, the one thing I always do is I always check. All right. I'll just drop my, I'll just say my steps and explain how I go. So like, First thing I'll do is I always throw my ProQL, the fat filter on there. Um, I throw it on there just to see. I mean, I use my ears, of course, but I like to just see, too, to see if I'm – it just reassures. And I'll just see if it's doing the flinch or Munson curve to see if, like, the lows are a little higher than the mids, the mids aren't too high, and, like, the highs are still, like, there. Because, um, like, you know, like, out of the iPhones, out of shitty speakers and all that, the mids is what really gives it that shitty distortion and all that. So if you take those out a little bit from the master, it's going to like clean up the whole song a little bit. Um, but anyways, I throw that on on the very, 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 very last insert on the master. I throw the pro Q just to see the French months curve. And I throw the GGI mastering chain on the first thing. And then um, I throw that on there. And then the second thing I throw on is the um, Slay FGX mastering console. I think it's FGX. It's by Fabrellis Cabrillo or something like that. But that shit's fire. I throw that on there. Only thing that's bad about that, it doesn't have the LUFS meter or LUFS meter. Um, so it's just RMS. Um, so I just, you know, RMS is supposed to be like nine or eight. So I just go to the, R, I go around, I literally go around like 10. And I just use my ears on there. And on that, there's like some sick ass shit. Like you can mess with the transients and like the dynamic. There's hella like cool stuff on there. It's pretty cool. Then I'll throw on, um, like a, a, a tape, a tape uh, saturation thing. Hey, hold on. Are you going from the last plugin to the first plugin you use? No. So the last plugin is the is the fat filter. I just threw oh. that. It sees everything. Yeah. But then I start with TGI, TGI, Slate Mastering Console. Oh, also, we're, we're not about to cut you off, but the TG Mastering is another thing I could definitely recommend people to buy. That's yeah. something that's sick. That's hey, awesome. sick. Um. And then I throw the tape one just to give it like a glue, like a warmth tape. Tape does something. We've heard it in real life. And like this one, I used to use J37. But J37 used to always like, it always used to make our mixes or my mixes sound distorted. For some reason, it always did. And I was like, you know what? Like I forced it. I forced it to be the sauce, but I didn't like that sauce. So, you know, this tape one works good and it sounds really good. I throw way more stuff on there, but we're only naming three. So oh, those are my three essential ones. All right. Let's see. Let's hear it from the man, Eli, the real mastering engineer. Here he is. Yo, I, was, I was making that face earlier because I've stolen hella mastering sauce from Big. <laughs> and you were like, we all do it differently. <laughs> That's stolen hella sauce. Um, <clears throat> That's funny. Um, let's see. Um, yeah, the TG is really good. Um, I, I want to say one thing too. I forgot. I do agree with Esteban. The NLS thing is like probably one of the best. Yeah. For like saturates and stuff like that. Cause you can throw it on anything. Mm -hmm. It beefs up. Yeah. Anyways. Though. Um, the NLS, the reason it's called also just to throw it out there. If you haven't seen it, the NLS bus is a bus itself. Uh, when you put it on, you can then put, what is the other one called? NLS channel or NLS. It's like called something like that. Okay. And then you put that on another channel and you can control I think the mix or the like how much you're sending to the bus or whatever. It's just like the trim pretty much. It's like yeah. a summing thing. So, okay. 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 Well, yeah. A summing, summing stack is a bus pretty much. I think, um, like, like, yeah. like the analog summing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the NLS bus is, is, uh, really good. I use that on, I use it on all my masters just because I use the trim knob more than anything. I do use drive, but like really slightly. um, since they covered the warmth and kind of saturation side, I'm going to talk about um, getting stuff to pop. <clears throat> Sorry for that. 
speaking of pop, it's just in my throat, but um, pause. Um, um, what's it called? Damn, I got all these faces on the camera right now. I can't, I can't, I forgot the audience. Uh, but one I've been using recently and that I think helps a lot, uh, and it's kind of like some secret shit I found out from somebody um, a while back is Smack Attack. And Smack Attack, uh, when you turn down, you don't want to use it, uh, like a lot of things on mastering and that they were talking about, you want to be really, really subtle, like 0.5 or like uh, one like dB changes or... Um, with the smack attack, I put the mix on like 20 or 15 because you don't want you don't want it to grab every snare or every time someone has like a bit of sibilance, it's going to grab it and like bring it out way too much. So the smack attack will bring um, it's a transient shaper and it'll bring all snares, kicks, um, the parts of your vocals you want to stand out and it's going to make them pop. That's what you hear in those pop songs. That's where like you turn that up with some 10k and you're going to get like that bright like. Um, just I, I guess just the top and the, the crispy stuff that you want the crispy bits um smack attack is one that i've been using um the l316 or lb316 lb316 or l316 one of those um it's a limiter uh but it does so, is it a multiband compressor as well because on the right side when it has priority and gain and that is what I've seen on a few multiband compressors. Um, L3, one, two, that one? No, the LB316, it looks really old. It's the one that you were yeah. showing me. Yeah, it is. It has like a, it's like a multiband EQ compressor. Yeah, um, you can use the gain on it, but I actually use priority. And what priority does is it'll prioritize what frequencies you have highlighted or like um, brought up and it'll try to, pull those out I, I don't do it too much again with mastering you're not trying to do anything to like a mixing degree where you'd be like you know bringing up like a bunch of reverb or bringing up like your delay really fat or whatever it may be a flanger this is all like really small to make everything fit and mix within itself so um smack attack uh the l3 which is it's it's, it's a limiter it's a limiter with a multiband compressor in it um it's just two and one and then Oh, man, I mean, I use TG pretty much every time because I like the sound of it. Um, something that has a spread on it, like a stereo widener um, or stereo imager, you just want something to open up your mix a little bit, especially with the TG. You um, have a lot of control over tone in the EQ section. Um, you can do mid side, you can do stereo, all that. Uh, mid side is really helpful. A shout out to Jimmy and Miles. Um, again they showed me a bunch of sauce with midside one time i was watching miles do it and like i didn't understand it and i went home and just messed with it for like a couple hours on a session i was working on and um it sounded really cool um but again you got to be really really subtle with all that stuff because you'll change the tone of your song like when you hit bypass it'll sound like so different like maybe you've cut all the low end out or you know all that stuff so um yeah and that's a good one too because i think that has a tape I think it has like some sort of saturation on it because it has um, uh, what's it called like the cl the curve on it like the flat and fifty all that stuff. So um, yeah, saturation, get your warmth in there, um, but make stuff crisp. Don't like Vic was saying. I think last episode, two episodes ago, warmth is nice is nice, but warmth is also dullness. Um, you're flattening some stuff out. Um, so just remember what you did in the mix when you go to mastering because all that work you did in the mix, you don't want to just kill by like taking all the 10k out when you just boosted it in all your vocals so you got to think about that you can't just it's not a new mix you're 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 finishing up the one that you just did um so just remember that every time you're just making it better just like how the mix is making the raw files better you're making the mixed files better yeah i think i think the best thing that um that you said besides everything else you said i'm just gonna say this is the main points i thought i brought out of what you said as um all, we're doing my new like my new i don't know if that's that was, I mean, that makes sense, but like subtle changes, you know, like you're not trying to, um, I sound like a little bicep right there. I was like, you know, um, but like, you're not trying, your goal isn't to, you're yeah. not going to do any, uh, hold on. I'm choking right now. Hold on. I said, a no pause for me, but, um, I think the best thing that Eli was saying is, is we're doing subtle changes. You know, you're not going to be. What, what I was taught in school and what I taught in like just watching YouTube videos is that you're not going to do more than like a, a DB or two of like change, you know, like when you have an EQ, you're not going to take down four 
five dB of something. If it's that bad, go back to the mix. Then you have to mix it better. Don't think in the mastery section, you can just pull down a little bit of like the snare. Because if you're taking out the snare, you're going to be taking out any presence of the, any other part of the beat. You're going to be taking any presence of any frequency range of any part of the vocal. So then you're affecting every single thing in that frequency range instead of taking out what you just wanted in the snare. So go back to the mix. That's the be- be- best thing I can give people is don't be afraid to go back into the mix. You know, like a lot of people think like, oh, I spent three hours on the mix and now I bounced it out. And like, and I've done like an, an hour worth of mastering, but now I'm trying to change the way of the, the vocal sounds. You know, like you're, you can't, you can't do that. You can't, you have, to, you're gonna, if you want a good, clean sounding mix, go back to the go ma- or master, like a finished song, a finished product, go back to the mix and make it the perfect mix to you. You know, and rest, rest your ears. Um, that's something I can get, uh, also give a big tip is rest your ears. You know, if you've been mixing for five hours, don't go right into a session and master for an hour, you know, like give yourself 30 minutes of a break and then go back to, and then, or something like that, you know, or maybe the next day, like people do the next day, you know, give yourself some time to actually hear what you're hearing. Cause your eyes, your ears are gonna be fatigued. So you won't be able to hear every single frequency like you were when you first started listening to the song. So that's a good tip I can give you too is, um, don't it's just give your time, give your ears some time to rest and um, to reset and refocus on. And also, um, a tip I could give too for uh, mastering is, or when you're done with the mix is bounce it so it's it's done. Bounce it as a as a wave, right? And then open up a new Pro Tool session. This is what I do, or what I've been doing now, is open up a new Pro Tool session and call it the name of the song and then call it mastering. So make sure you get your file organization. Check out our last YouTube video by learning how our or our last video or the video before that, check in our previous video, our second or two videos ago. I'll put it in the, I'll put it up here somewhere. Um, you'll see, and it's going to pop up and it's going to say um, our organization tips. So this is a part of our organization is make a new session and call it mastering. Whatever the name song is, you know, like your artist name, song, the date, and then put mastering, however you do it. But anyways, what my, what my goal is trying to say is, my point is, is to make a new session with a bounce, with a wave file of the mix and then you master it all in that own session just so that way you have a clean revision. You're not looking at other tracks. You're not looking at other of the send levels. Like you see Vic's, um, if you're on YouTube, you could see the back, um, his background is a session. You know, mixing or mastering to me on there is kind of confusing, or not confusing, but it's just a little cluttered. You know, you're seeing plugins, you're seeing a bunch of other like lines and stuff. You just want to see the, the two track of the, of the song ma- mixed and then or pre like pre mastered mixed, and then you want to have a, a your uh, master your stereo bus to then master your whole song. For me, that just keeps it clean. Uh, that's just me for organization's sake. It might not it, you, it may not help it you for anything. It may not help you for anything, but for me, it just makes it seem cleaner. And that's a tip I can give to people. Um, I think before it ends, we should all go around and give our main mastery. Yeah. We will right now. Um, but I think what tip I can give out is. <clears throat> sorry um a tip i could definitely give is um or plugins that i could definitely give out that we've been talked about is definitely the tg mastering the tg mastering chain and the nls bus those are the two that we talked about consistently that each of us use that i believe are the best to buy and that's just a recommendation i can give you um and a big tip is get a perfect mix and don't try to fix the mix when you're mastering that's a good tip so I'll go ahead and give it off to Eli, actually. Um, I'm going to just go, I guess, with um, just you said just a tip, right? Just one tip. Um, be subtle. Um, I've ruined mixes by adding way too much drive or way too much low end. Like when I was like, oh, you know, like this... Um, uh, this Poltec or the TG sounds so sick when you add like fucking three or four dBs of low end, like 125 like K and under, like a shelf or uh, 125 uh, hertz, sorry, not K, <laughs> 125 hertz and under, like, um, and it sounds cool in your headphones when you're sitting there with like your headphones on, and, you know, you got the bass going and then you bounce it to your phone and it's just destroyed. Um, so remember that um, don't clip. Um, oh, oh, here's one that I don't even think we talked about, but is it's pre mastering, but it goes into mastering. You do not want your pre master, all your tracks to come in at negative 
at, at negative 0.1. You're not trying to hit the ceiling before you're mastering because then you can't go up. You are just sitting at the ceiling and you're compressing. You're not doing anything. You're squashing the entire track. You want to come in at like, I mean, I, I try to come in at least at least at like negative five, negative, like, and like I try to come in somewhere on there. When I get to the end, sometimes um, I'm going to hand this off quick, but when I get to the end, sometimes I'll click all and I'll bring everything down by three or four and then I'll turn the master back up. So everything that's coming into the master is already lower. Um, leveling is a big thing. We've talked about this before in a, in a few videos, but not too in depth. I know we're going to make uh, tutorials about leveling, but leveling is so big for mastering. So that's one thing um, besides like, you know, making your master sound good with, with mixing everything, right. With like your low end and stuff. Um, don't come in hot. Cause if you come in hot, the end result is only going to be clipping and distortion and just, you're not going to like it real quick before, uh, Vic goes right now. Um, what, what, uh, Eli is saying about, um, bringing down the, bringing down every single track is what we're talking about. Gain staging, you know, like don't bring it back. Just uh, gain staging. Remember gain staging. And that's all I'm going to say. So I'll let Vic give ahead. And uh, go ahead and give his little tips. All right. So I'm going to just add a little bit to the gain station too. We're going to do a tutorial on this. Well, I'm, I'll do one on this one because, um, but like one thing I highly recommend is like, once you're done mixing everything, like group all your vocals, you know, group your beat and your parallel compression, group everything that is together with the fader and then create what I, I just learned about this too, like recently. Not too recent, but like this year sometime. Um, uh, create something called VCA Masters, and then those are literally a master fader for the groups. So then you just create those, and then the input is the group, and then you can control the whole group with that fader. And then like you'll see it when you when you drag it down, like everything will go down with it. It just makes it a little more easier, more clean. If you see my session, oh, I don't have them up yet. I'm not done with that mix. But on the other ones, you'll see it. There's VCA Masters. Anyways, leveling is a huge thing. And then my other tip I'll give is try and master at negative 13 or 14 LUFS with a negative one true peak. That is, if you can set it at that almost every time, it'll sound almost as loud as everything else on all the streaming. That's pretty much the default is that. And um, a few... Uh, uh, um, plugins I can say is the LUF, not LUFS, the Ulean loudness meter, that's, that's free. So literally the LUFS and the whole gain staging and all that, you can monitor that with this free plugin. Um, and if you want to spend money, you can get all the other ones that we're talking about too. Slate, Waves, UA, they all got good stuff. Acoustica, I mean, it goes on and on. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully one of them will sponsor us soon. If you do want to sponsor us, we had an email, you know, uh, hit us up at the rough mix podcast at gmail.com. Um, Another thing I want to say is, uh, if you if you re if you heard me say that, go ahead and like the video too and subscribe, please. If we get yo, if we get fifteen likes, I'm doing a give. No, I'm just kidding. But if we, if we get fifteen likes, um, you know, we'll mix your song free. We'll we'll all, we'll all you know we'll do something. We got to do something. You got to give some incentive. You know, yeah, um, I'll mix your song for free because I have nothing to do right now. All I'm doing is like making beats, man. Also, hit us up. Send the messages on Instagram. Uh, whatever message you send us, we will read that message out loud. Just keep yeah. it rated, PG. Um, I think Someone later on sends us a movie to mix. PG. Yeah. Yo, no, but uh, la later on, I think um, another thing we'll do is um, later on we'll do we'll make a Discord if there's enough people you know that are willing to do it, so we can have like a, a chat in there and like talk about our tips and like different plugins we use, what plugins to check out, any like links for like discounts and stuff, like just to help us out. Like we're just trying to be able to build a little community to help people out, you know, like. So I feel like that's a good way to do to, a good way to um, bring everybody that's a part of the our community for the rough mix and like make a Discord and be like, hey, like yo, like Pro Audio Stars having this discount thirty percent off, or you know, like Waves is having a bundle off. You know, if you guys didn't even heard it, just like link it. You know, like it's just gonna help everybody out. And especially for the plugins and stuff we're talking about, I think it's the best uh, a best way to go about having a Discord. But um, this has been the Rough Mix podcast. It's your boy Trunks. You got Vic. Jordan and Eli. I know Jordan's a little quiet on this one. Um, he's a little shy today, but um, we'll, he'll definitely be talking in a few episodes. Um, I believe, I think the next episode or a few episodes, we're going to be talking about how we all met up. That's a, a little story time. You know, talk about meet the rough mix kind of thing. But for now, this has been the rough mix podcast. Subscribe and like to us on YouTube.
rate us five stars on all the on all the social me- on all the platforms that you hear us on, and uh, hit us up for questions on the comments or anything. But this has been the Rough Mix podcast, and your boys are out.